Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. In this video, uh, we will talk about the comparative anatomy of the femur bone and look for the differences between the different animal species. In this case, don't forget to look at the previous video where we describe the anatomical features and the structures of the femur bone of the horse. So let's get started. Before we start talking about the differences between the different animal species, uh, let's go quickly through uh, the different structures which we described in our video, uh, previous video. Uh, so here we had the femur bone of the horse. And as you can see here in the proximal extremity, we can see uh, medially the head. This is the head of the femur bone with the fovea capitis or the fovea of the head uh, here we have the neck and the body down on the lateral side here we have uh, this big projection called the uh, greater trochanter which could be divided in the horse into two parts as you can see this is the cranial part and here we have the caudal part between them as you can see here we have a notch the greater trochanter as we said before it's insertion for area for uh, the gluteal muscles here in the horse, in the cranial view, laterally we can see this big projection which is present just in the horse called the third trochanter, uh, located below the greater trochanter. As you can see on the medial side here we have the lesser trochanter, the lesser trochanter, uh, the insertion area of the iliopsoas muscle. In the caudal view here we have uh, from the greater trochanter toward the body we have the trochanter crest trochanteric crest here and medial to it we have the trochanteric fossa in the horse as we described previously here between or in the caudal view somehow uh, between uh, the uh, third trochanter and uh, the lesser trochanter here we have another projection called the bicepital tuberosity insertion uh, additional insertion area of the biceps femoris muscle uh, here in the horse we uh, can see the nutrient foramen um, just some, somehow in the middle of the body as you can see in the in the middle of the body here located more caudomedially caudomedially this is the nutrient foramen of the femur bone of the horse uh, more distally in the distal uh, uh, extremity of the femur bone cranially we have the trochlea this is the femoral trochlea and uh, we describe this one and name it as uh, the trochlea tuberosity is extremely important in the horse if we go to the caudal view here we have the two condyles this is the two condyles we have the lateral condyle and the medial condyle between them we have the intercondylar fossa uh, we say that you know above the lateral condyle here in the horse we have the supracondylar fossa next to it laterally and medially we have the supracondylar tuberosity this is the lateral and this is the medial one the uh, supracondylar crest here and uh, we said also you know that on the lateral condyle we have two fossae the cranial located one is the extensor fossa and this one here located caudally is the bobletial fossa and now let's uh, uh, look at the femur bone in some other animal species and let's start with the one of the ox for example so here we have the femur bone of the ox uh, it's again you know long bone two extremity this is the proximal extremity the distal extremity um, the first thing we have to mention here is you know that uh, comparing to the horse there is no third trochanter there is no third trochanter but let's start you know looking at the different structures of the ox here uh, starting with the proximal uh, extremity medially of course we have of course the head of the femur bone laterally we have the greater trochanter if you look exactly at the head is uh, somehow located below the greater trochanter below the greater trochanter look how it looks um, on the head if you go to the medial uh, view here we have the fovea of the head or fovea capitis fovea of the head is circular um, not that deep is flat <coughs> A circular not that deep flat uh, located in the center of the head and uh, if we want to compare this one with that one of the horse of course we say that 
the fovea capitis of the horse has a small uh, caudoventral uh, opening here and uh, to allow of course the accessory ligament of the head of the femoral bone to move through here in the ox there is no accessory ligament of the head of the femoral bone and that's why there is no groove so here we have uh, the fovea capitis in the middle as i said before of the head uh, if we look at the greater tucanta, the greater tucanta, yes, it's it's huge, but it's not divided into cranial and caudal part. Let's look at that one of the horse again. In the horse, we say that uh, the greater tucanta has cranial part and caudal part. Here, the greater tucanta is not uh, divided. Uh, we say that there is no third tucanta here from the body, where is the lesser tucanta. In the cranial view, it's difficult to see the lesser tucanta compared to that one of the horse, so in the cranial view we can see the lesser trochanta just because the lesser trochanta of the ox is located caudally here as you can see and uh, if you look at this one and compare that one with the horse it's more rough, uh, uh, rounded like a, a tuberosity or trochanta here uh, while it was like elongated, elongated in the horse um, Let's stay in this view and look at the um, Turcanteric crest. Turcanteric crest is oblique, as you can see here. Compare that one to the uh, elongated also uh, crest in the horse. So it's more oblique, and uh, uh, you know that Turcanteric fossa is oval shaped and deep here, uh, while it's also elongated in the uh, horse, the Turcanteric fossa. Again, so there is no third trochanta and there's also no um, you know comparing to the horse we say that this is the bicipital uh, tuberosity there is no bicipital tuberosity here of the femur bone of the ox okay what else in general the caudal surface of the femur bone of the ox is, is smoother than that one of the horse as you can see yeah um, you know they have similar location of the um, of the uh, nutrient frame is located caudal medially in the middle of the shaft as you can see here if we go down to the distal uh, extremity here um, the distal extremity has of course uh, the trochlea the trochlea of the ox is more oblique as you can see comparing to that one of the horse and uh, here we have the um, uh, trochlea tuberosity uh, of the trochlea and the ox, uh, of course, is located also above the lateral edge of the trochlea, as you can see here, the same like that one of the uh, horse. Uh, if we go to the caudal view here, we can uh, see the two condyles. We have the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. The lateral condyle is bigger than the medial condyle, as you can see here. Uh, between them we have the intercondylar fossa of course uh, yes in this case if you remember we say that above the lateral condyle we have the supracondylar fossa it's there in the ox of course but it's not that developed like that one of the horse and the horse is very deep as you can see um, what else uh, of course lateral medial to the condyle we have the lateral uh, epicondyle and the medial epicondyle for ligament and muscle attachment as we said before, um, um, good. Here on the lateral uh, condyle, we can also see the two fossa which we described in the horse. Here we have the extensor fossa, the origin of the long digital extensor muscle. Here, uh, a little bit caudally, we have the popliteal fossa for uh, as origin of the popliteal muscle. So that's everything about. Uh, um, the femur bone of the ox let's put the, the this on the side also and look at that one of the camel so in general as you can see here the femur bone of the camel is very long comparing to other animals look you know it's very long comparing to other animals and uh, in general let's go directly to the proxima region uh, immediately we have the head of the uh, femur bone laterally we have the trochlea but comparing to that one of the ox for example let's put them together here you can see how the head in the camel is located above uh, the uh, greater trochanta it's above the greater trochanta let me just put it like this so it's above the greater trochanta uh, while in the ox for example the greater trochanta was above the head of the femur bone 
what else of course here with regards to the lesser to canter is located completely medially here in the uh, in the camel so in the medial view you can see directly the lesser to canter it wasn't the case here for example on the ox so and the ox is located more caudally um, here in this area so uh, what else if we move to the caudal view here we can see uh, from the greater trochanta the uh, trochanteric crest here it's also a little bit oblique not no not that big and and uh, we have also small uh, trochanteric fossa insertion area of the you know long uh, uh, sorry small uh, muscles of the hip joint uh, what else so if we move down here on the caudal surface as you can see we have this uh, very good you know developed uh, uh, rough lines here um, they will start here and move uh, together and of course after that they will be separated again uh, in the distal uh, part of the femur bone of the camel as you can see here we have the two condyles we have the lateral condyle here the medial condyle here um, what's very important to mention here that the supracondylar fossa is absent is absent in the camel so there is no fossa here comparing to that one of the ox for example here you know, here in this area here or of course more developed in the horse so this is the supracondylar fossa in the horse is absent in the camel but instead of course we have also very good developed like a, a supracondylar uh, tuberosity uh, we have the supracondylar crest left and I mean laterally and medially uh, between the two condyles we have uh, the uh, the inter uh, condylar fossa uh, let's move to the uh, cranial view here it's very also very important you know if you look at the trochlea of the femur bone here it's uh, relatively small comparing to the to other to other one like this one of the ox for example let me just put the ox like this and now look at, at the level or the, compare the lateral edge with the medial edge here of the camel they uh, they have the similar size uh, and they they are located at the same level as you can see here so they are at the same level at the same level the the trochlea is a little bit oblique located here for the articulation of course with the batella um, laterally here we have the epicondyles of course and uh, on the lateral condyle if you ask for the extensor fossa here we have the extensor fossa origin of the long digital extensor muscle uh, located crani cranially you know here in this area caudally we have on um, the fossa is the bobletial fossa for the bobletial muscle okay in general of course uh, uh, in all animals uh, this area located in this uh, here is uh, called uh, the uh, popliteal service this is the popliteal service i'm not sure why exactly they named this area as you know a popliteal service because it doesn't have anything to do with the popliteal muscle but uh, you know it's um, it's this area here described in different books good and now uh, sorry we, we we forgot to to look at the head here in the in the camel the fovea capitis is uh, like oval shaped uh, located somehow in the center of the head and there is also no extra groove from this fovea capitis because there is no ac accessory ligament of the head of the femur bone in the camel okay and now let's look at the femur bone of the sheep uh, again to extremity this is the proxima this is the distal and now let's just you know look at the differences again uh, the uh, fovea capita is located in the center uh, of the femur head like that one of the ox uh, there is no extra groove uh, uh, here uh, comparing to the horse for example is flat located in the middle of the femur head uh, this is the insertion area uh, of the ligamentum capitis osseus femoris or the ligament of the head of the femur bone um, the greater to canter the greater to canter of the sheep uh, is not divided into cranial and caudal part this is uh, the case even in the ox i forgot to talk about this i think so the greater trochanter is not divided in the ox into two parts uh, it's also not divided even in the 
uh, in the camel so this is the camel again one more time this is the greater trochanter is not divided into lateral and medial um, parts uh, so here in the sheep is also not divided so it, it looks like it's divided just in the horse into two bars this is the greater trochanter here we have the uh, trochanter crest with the trochanter fossa uh, located in this area, it's uh, you know for the insertion of the small muscles of the hip joint. Here, um, the lesser trochanter is located uh, at the same level or in the same way like that one of the ox, uh, you know, caudally, caudally, uh, not medially like the uh, the camel, for example, or like the horse or the uh, even the dog, which we are going to describe later. Um, what else? So here um, we can find another, another for example, a nutrient for him and here in the proximal region in the cranial view. In the cranial view, you can see the nutrient for him of the femur bone of the sheep here. Uh, in the same view, in the cranial view here, if you look at this tally here, we can see how you know the two edge, uh, edges of the trochlea are similar in size and they are also located at the same level. At the same level, you know, if we want to compare this uh, with that one of the ox, you know, look at the medial edge of the trochlea here, it's above the lateral, while they are located at the same level here in the sheep. Um, what else if we move to the caudal uh, view we can see the lateral condyle and the medial condyle between them we have the intercondylar fossa and here uh, yeah so we can also find the supracondylar fossa is flat here like that one of the ox for example um, what else uh, the epicondyle so this is yeah uh, important here uh, the lateral epicondyle of the femur bone of the sheep is bigger is bigger than that one of the medial side so the then you know the lateral epicondyle is bigger than the medial epicondyle here so don't forget the lateral and medial epicondyles are there for ligament and muscle attachment uh, good of course if you want to see uh, the extensor fossa is located on the lateral uh, condyle this is the extensor fossa and this is here the popliteal fossa um, again, um, here in the case of the sheep, you know, the head and the trochlea are located at the same level, you know, as you can see here. Good. Uh, now let's go and talk about the femur bone of the, uh, of the dog. Uh, this is the femur bone of the dog. Uh, in the proximal region, of course, medially we have uh, the head uh, with the small fovea capitis located also in the middle of the head here for the attachment you know, for the attachment of the ligament ligamentum capitis osseus femoris uh, the greater trochanter is also not divided into two parts so located laterally is not divided uh, the lesser trochanter is uh, located caudomedially caudomedially is very clear pointed somehow it's the origin of the iliopsoas muscle um, okay, the, in the caudal view here we have very deep developed like a uh, trochanteric fossa, trochanteric fossa. Uh, this study here uh, we can uh, uh, find of course here the trochlea, the trochlea, the two uh, parts of the trochlea are also located at the same level as you can see here. The trochlea itself it's uh, more flat compared to other animals so this is for the articulation with the batilla of course here uh, in the caudal view we have the two condyles the lateral and the medial between them we have the uh, intercondylar fossa the supracondylar fossa is not present in the dog uh, and uh, this is extremely important here in this area here exactly on the condyles here and there here and there you can find two facets Two facets. So here is the lateral facet, and this is the medial facet. Here they are there for the articulation with two sisa, small sesamoid bones. So this is the case just in the dog, just in the dog. So normally, just for your information, the gastrocnemius muscle has two heads: lateral head and medial head. They originate normally from the supracondylar crest here and there. So uh, the tendon of the lateral head and the medial head, they move here in the case of the uh, horse on the condyles, on the condyles, and to reduce the friction between the tendon and the condyles, they are just in the dog here. Did I say horse? No, dog here, we dog. 
so in, in the dog we have two small sesamoid bones here um, articulates uh, with this facet here and there and uh, embedded somehow in the tendon of the gastrocnemius muscle to reduce the friction between the tendon and the condyles. Uh, if you look at the lateral side uh, of the lateral condyle, we can see also here the extensor fossa for the long digital extensor muscle and the popliteal fossa here for the popliteal muscle. This is everything about the comparative anatomy of the uh, of the femur bone. Let, let me just put them all together again here, just like this. And this one is that one of the horse. And finally, we have the very long, you know, femur bone of the camel here. So it doesn't pass completely in the picture. So this is the femur bone of the camel, horse, ox, sheep, and dog. And thank you very much. See you in the next uh, video. Bye-bye.